एवरीवन आई एम प्रोफेसर प्रियंका निखिल माने फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग के कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग कोल्हापुर टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द कोर्स ऑफ फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग इन दिस कोर्स वी आर गोइंग टू डील विथ सम बेसिक कंसेप्ट दैट आर रिलेटेड टू इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग वी विल स्टार्ट विद द यूनिट नंबर वन डी सी इलेक्ट्रिक सर्किट एंड मैग्नेटिक सर्किट सो इन दिस यूनिट देर आर टू पार्ट्स first we will start with the dc electric circuit before actually starting to the contents we will just discuss about some basic concepts that are needed to learn the electrical engineering course so first we will start with very basic concept and important concept that is electric current so basically in any kind of conductor there is a movement of electron that will be there okay which will be in the random direction so when we apply some kind of force that random direction of electrons that will be in the particular direction that means there is a movement of electrons from one point to other point so this is nothing but the flow of electrons so this flow of electrons or flow of charges is nothing but the electric current in another way we can define the electric current as this is the rate of flow of charges with respect to time this can be measured in ampere milliampere or microampere this electric current is of two types we are having alternating current normally we call it as ac and another one we have direct current we call it as dc so we will discuss about the dc current so this dc current or direct current that means a current which will be having a definite direction and constant magnitude with respect to time this is called as pure dc if we look at these two wave forms here we can see in the first wave form okay here we can see the direction of current is only one direction and the magnitude is also constant so this is called as pure dc in another wave form okay here also we have one direction but the magnitude is not constant so this is called as fluctuating dc or unidirectional dc in case of ac we will not have the constant direction and constant magnitude with respect to time it will be changing alternating hence the name is alternating current next we have the dc circuit so dc circuit is nothing but the closed path where the electric current can flow the examples of dc circuits are small toys circuit of dc motor and any other circuits which are present in torch or small kind of batteries so basically if we look at this electric circuit it will be having the components such as emf that is electromotive force then we have the number of resistances connected in any manner okay then uh, it may have the current source as well so basically this dc circuit will be having node branch loop and mesh we will discuss about node what is node actually a node is a junction point where two or more circuit elements are connected so here in this diagram we can see p q and r these three are the nodes where the number of resistances then the source of emf okay these two are connected the next we are having the branch branch is nothing but a part of a circuit which lies between or which presents between the two nodes so here we can see pr then pqr then psr all these are the branches but sr is not a branch as in between s and r there is no any circuit element is present next we have one more definition related to dc circuit that is nothing but the loop what is loop actually loop can be any closed path in electric circuit but the mesh is different than the loop okay so what is the difference between actually mesh and loop mesh is also closed the path but which do not contain any other loop within it so this is the separate part okay which will be having so there is a difference in the mesh and loop that we need to understand next we have the concept of electric potential so every point or every charge in case of electrical circuit it will be having its own energy or its own potential so it can be defined as the capacity of a point to drive a current towards any other point or there is a difference between the two electric points this is called as electric potential so basically if we see when we apply some kind of force to the electrons so there is a flow of electrons that we call it as current 
that current will be flowing from higher potential to lower potential. Hence, whenever there is a difference in the two potentials, the current will be flowing okay. and that potential we can measure in terms of folds. So, in this circuit which is shown here, the current I is flowing through this resistor R due to this source of EMF. Hence, there is a difference in points A and point B. Okay, because point A and point B, these two points are having different different potentials. So, always the current will be flowing from higher potential to lower potential. Next, we have the definition of electromotive force. It can be denoted by E or V. So, basically this is one kind of force which is responsible for circulating the current in a closed path or this is also can be defined as the force or pressure which is required to flow the electrons in one particular direction. So, whatever the random movement of electrons that will be there in any kind of conductor due to this EMF or electromotive force all the electrons will be flowing in one particular direction. So, we can take the example of dry cell, acid cell, DC generator, solar cell etcetera in all those equipments or forces ok. We can get the source of EMF ok which is also called as uh, voltage ok due to which the current will be flowing. So, basically this unit of EMF is nothing but the volt. So, here just think why there is a flow of electric current or current flows because of the answer is nothing but the current is flowing because of the source of EMF or electromotive force itself. Next very important concept we will discuss about resistance and Ohm's law. So, these two are correlated to each other. So, basically whenever there is a flow of electric current the internal property of that kind of material it will oppose the flow of electric current that is nothing but the resistance and its unit is Ohm. So, basically if we see the resistance of that material is directly proportional to the length and inversely proportional to the cross sectional area of that particular conductor. If we want to remove the proportionality constant we will introduce the resistivity which is one kind of constant. So, basically the equation for resistance will be R equals to rho L by A. So, where rho is nothing but the resistivity which is measured in ohm, L is the active length of the conductor in meters and A is nothing but the cross sectional area in meter square. So, this is about the resistance. Now, what is the ohm's law? According to the statement in any electrical circuit whenever all the physical quantities are constant for example, force is there, pressure is there, temperature is there then whatever the current that is flowing through that conductor is directly proportional to the voltage and inversely proportional to the resistance of that particular material. So, according to the Ohm's law I proportional to V or I is inversely proportional to 1 upon R where R is nothing but the electric resistance in Ohm, V is nothing but the voltage across that resistance and I is nothing but the current flowing through that resistance etcetera. Okay. So, this is related to resistance and Ohm's law. Then we will discuss about the Kirchhoff's laws. Okay. So, these Kirchhoff's laws are very useful for analysis of DC circuits. So, these laws were invented by Gustav Kirchhoff's in 1845. So, basically there are two laws. So, first law we call it as Kirchhoff's current law or point law or we also called as Kirchhoff's first law. Second law we called it as Kirchhoff's voltage law, mesh law or Kirchhoff's second law. So, first we will discuss about the Kirchhoff's current law. So, according to the statement the algebraic sum of currents meeting at a junction point is 0 or in another way at a node in case of electrical circuit the total incoming currents are equal to total outgoing currents. So, basically this law is based on the conservation of charges because we know the charges in case of electrical circuit they cannot accumulate at one particular point. Some of the charges will be coming towards the node or some of the charges will be going away from the node. We can take the example of battery here or dry cell here. So, whenever the battery is going to charge with the help of some external energy source we can take the example of our mobile. 
so whenever we connect the mobile to electric supply the battery is taking the current that means the current is coming towards the node or towards the battery okay and whenever we are going to disconnect the mobile from that source when it will it will get fully charged that time the energy which is stored in the battery that we are going to utilize for other purpose that means the battery is supplying the current that time the current will be going away from the battery or that kind of load so if you consider this figure here some of the currents i have taken at a point a or node point a this i1 and i2 these two currents are incoming currents they are coming towards the node and this i3 and i4 these two currents are there which are going away from the node so according to the statement we will consider always incoming currents as a positive and outgoing currents as a negative you can consider in reverse way as well that means outgoing current you can consider as a positive or uh, incoming currents you can consider as a negative so according to the first statement the equation will be i1 plus i2 equals to i3 plus i4 so this is according to kcl so by using this kcl we can solve the circuit by different different methods so here we will discuss about the nodal analysis method so basically this nodal analysis this is the systematic way of applying your kirchhoff's laws for solving the unknown circuit currents so basically the two nodes on the circuit they are connected directly through a particular line okay and you have to treat them as a same node okay as shown in this figure so these all the nodes we have connected to this d node okay and x and y are not your different different nodes okay uh, they are merged into d node only and after that you have to write the kcl equations only for the given circuit so what the procedure that you are going to follow just to solve the circuit by using nodal analysis first you have to identify all the nodes of the circuit okay whatever the nodes are present that you have to identify first then you have to select one node as your reference node and you have to assume the particular potential for that node is 0 volt you have to label the potentials of all other present node okay that whatever the nodes are present then you have to assume the suitable branch current directions you have to express that branch current with the help of your potential difference that is voltage and resistance in the branch divided by resistance in that particular branch that means according to the ohms law you have to write the equation and at each node finally you have to write all the equations by using kcl and you have to solve that simultaneous equations just to understand this nodal analysis we will consider this one example okay this is the solved example by using nodal analysis sorry yes here we can see okay the circuit is present in this circuit 2 ampere and 5 ampere these two are the current sources present over here then here 200 ohm 100 ohm and 300 ohm resistances are mentioned and we have to find the voltage across 300 ohm and 200 ohm in the circuit okay that means we are going to find the voltage drop across these 300 ohm and 200 ohm resistances now first we will assume only one node okay at the bottom point c okay at this bottom point c we will consider one common node with a zero volt potential and another one top left node okay this will be our node a and this will be our node b now whatever the potentials of a b c that are respectively va vb and vc we will assume now according to this one here we can write i1 this is nothing but the current source which already they have given so this is 2 ampere now i2 we will write as va minus vc divided by 200 particular that register similarly we can write i3 will be equals to va minus vb divided by 100 and finally your i4 will be 5 ampere and i5 will be vb minus vc divided by 300 now here as we see our reference node so we see will be having zero volt potential now at particular node a we will apply the kcl over here so according to that equation 
I1 will be equals to I2 plus I3. Now we have to substitute the values of I1, I2 and I3 and we have to simplify this equation. Okay. So, finally, we will get the equation in terms of some constant and two unknown variables. So, 400 will be equals to 3 into V A minus 2 into V B. So, this we will call it as equation number 1. Now, similarly at node B, we have to apply the KCL over here. So, I 4 plus I 3 will be equals to I 5 or I 5 will be equals to I 3 plus I 4. Now, again we have to substitute all those values which are already mentioned over here according to the nodal analysis. Then we will get another equation okay, that is minus 3 V A plus 4 V B equals to 1500. So, this is my equation number 2. Now, we have to solve these two simultaneous equations to get the values of V A and V B. So, after solving these equations we will get the value of V B will be equals to 950 volt. So, that is nothing but the voltage across 300 ohm resistor which is asked and finally, we will get the value of V A if you substitute the value of V B in either of these two equations, we will get the value of V A which is equal to 765 volt or 767 volt something. So, which is nothing but the voltage across 200 ohm. So, by using this KCL and nodal analysis, we can simplify and we can solve the circuit just to get the unknown current values and finally, uh, we, we will get the unknown value of the voltages across each resistances. So, in the next class, we will discuss about the Kirchhoff's voltage law and mesh analysis and remaining concepts related to DC electric circuit. Thank you.